All right, and good evening. Welcome to the March 28th, 2024 regular meeting of the Xenia City Council. Uh, this time we will have an invocation led by Pastor Albert Reffitt from Victory Life Christian Center, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, we have a scout here named Charlotte Howard. She'll be leading that Pledge of Allegiance and she's earning her citizenship community badge. So thank you for being here, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the sunshine today and your blessings. And, and Lord, we just ask your blessing tonight upon this meeting. We thank you, God, for every one of these city workers here tonight, Lord, the city council, our mayor, others representing the government of the city. We, we invoke your blessing, Father. We ask you to give them divine favor, give them discretion in the business that they transact continuously in our behalf. Father, we ask that you continue to lead our city in a path of prosperity. And Father, we just ask that you give them grace for the responsibilities that they carry. And we just thank you for your goodness that we see throughout our city. And Father, we're mindful tonight of our other public servants that are on duty, the fire and EMS, police, sheriff's department, all of these public servants, we pray over them tonight, God. We ask that the angels of the Lord keep them safe and keep them from harm. In Jesus' name, and amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. At this time, we'll have Charlotte Howard come forward to the podium. And if you could all turn to the flag, you can lead us anytime. I I pledge okay, sorry, to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor Ruffett, and thank you, Scott Howard. At this time, I'm going to open up our meeting and ask for a roll call, please. Vice President Smith? Here. Councilman Crawford? Here. Councilwoman Strees? Here. Councilman Reynolds? Here. Councilman Dean? Here. Mayor Mays? Here. President Urschel? All right. Uh, President Urschel is away today. I'll be leading the meeting in his absence. Could I get a uh, motion to excuse the president for tonight's meeting? I move that we Thank excuse you. President Urschel. Moved by Councilman Reynolds. Do we have a second? I will second that. Seconded by Councilwoman Cerise. Any comments or questions? Get a roll call to accept that, please. Councilman Crawford? Yes. Councilwoman Cerise? Aye. Councilman Reynolds? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Mayor Mays? Aye. Vice President Smith? Yes. Carries? All right. Also tonight in absence is our law director uh, doing some uh, fault for a medical reason. Uh, she emailed me, uh, asked for her excuse. Uh, so I gave it to her. Um, so we're going to move on to approval of minutes. And before us is the minutes from the March 14th, 2024 regular meeting. At this time, I'll accept a motion to accept the minutes. Mr. President, I move that we accept the minutes. Thank you. Moved by Councilman Reynolds. We have a second. No. Thank you. Seconded by Councilman Crawford. <laughs> is there any corrections, additions, omissions need to be made to the minutes? Seeing none, we'll get a roll call to accept those, please. Councilman Crawford? Aye. Councilman Cruz? Aye. Councilman Reynolds? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Mayor May? Aye. Vice President Smith? Aye. Motion Thank you. Next on our agenda is special presentations. We have none scheduled for tonight, so that moves us directly into audience comments. This is the portion of the meeting where anyone in the audience is welcome to come to the podium at this time. If you could give us your name and address for the record. This is fine, right? I invited her to sit with me. Oh, cool. Okay, great. Unless you want her to come to speak. Um, do you want to just introduce yourself on uh, camera? Okay. <laughs> We're not calling you out or anything. <laughs> you um, hello, my name is Charlotte Howard. I'm from Troop 68. Um, I'm here getting my citizenship in Community Merit Badge. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. We appreciate that. Also, uh, anyone else in the audience care to come forward at this time? If you could just give us your name and address uh, for the record, live your comments, two to three minutes, please. Okay. Mike Kammer. I'm from Springfield, Ohio, and I've appeared before you before on the issue of the bike path. And uh, as I drove by the other day, hoping to see something happening, 
I haven't seen anything happen yet. And I was wondering, do you guys, when you have a hazardous condition, do you apply a rack code to it where you say, you know, the chance of this happening is this big, but the consequence is this small or vice versa, kind of like that bridge that went down in Baltimore. They thought it would never happen, so they didn't build a, you know, an island around it. Because um, I haven't seen anything done, and I'm just kind of, you know, the person that appears, the wheel that squeaks gets the oil, and I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to be the wheel. So if you guys have any um, information that you can share with me, I would appreciate it. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mike. All right. Um, we may have a report on that later. Do we know? Yeah. The solution is in the works, but I don't have an exact timeline on it. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, anyone else care to come forward at this time? All right. We're going to move on to old business. Our first and only item in old business is a public hearing. This is Ordinance 2024-05. And before we do the introduction, um, this is amending section 214.01 of the city's legislative code. Um, we'll turn this over to the city manager first for a quick overview. Yeah, as council recall, this is uh, uh, language that uh, an ordinance that would amend our quote code that would increase our current um, uh, bid, bid threshold from the current amount of 50000 to 75000 uh, this would bring this into alignment with uh, what the state of Ohio has adopted for state uh, for any statutory authorities and would also incorporate a 3% annual uh, automatic increase on that amount uh, to keep up with inflation. Uh, this, of course, would um, uh, also, uh, as part of this, amend those items uh, that would need to come back to council so we would have administratively the ability to approve up to that same amount. So, uh, again, this would help us align with uh, what the state uh, currently has established as its standard. All right, thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions for city manager on this ordinance? If not, um, this was originally introduced by Councilman Reynolds at our last meeting. Yeah, uh, what Brian said is true. Uh, the re I historically would be opposed to something like this, but this is something that's very important, I think, because the purchasing power is not what it used to be. You know, 50000 is not even comparable to what it was let alone five years ago. So I think it's a very important legislation that we passed this. Uh, you know, if something breaks, and instead of coming to council for an emergency, you know, we'll have the authority to go through with that. So, all right, thank you. So, you move for passage then? Oh, I move for passage. Very yes. good. Thank you. Do we have a second on this? Oh, second. Second. Seconded by the mayor. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All right. If not, we're going to open the public hearing and ask anyone in the audience who would care to come forward and speak in favor or against. Ordinance 2024-05. All right, we have no one come forward. We'll close that public hearing on this, and uh, we have a first and a second, so we'll go ahead and do a roll call, please. Councilman Crawford? Aye. Councilwoman Cerise? Aye. Councilman Reynolds? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Mayor Mays? Aye. Vice President Smith? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Next on the agenda is new business. Our first item under or old new business tonight is an emergency. This is Ordinance 2024-06. This is amending Ordinance 2024-03, which was a pro providing appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures for the city of Xenia for our fiscal year ending December 31st of 2024. We are declaring this as an emergency, and we'll turn this over to Mr. Duke. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, there are a number of, of items to be presented to council tonight uh, related to um, the award of bids uh, that we recent re recently received back. Um, please report that uh, many of those bids came back well under uh, what was budgeted and what was estimated, so that's a very good thing. Uh, there was one of the projects, uh, the uh, Country Club waterline uh, replacement, uh, where uh, there's a need for an additional appropriation, and, and the reason for that is not that it came in overbid, but rather that the ratio between uh, the grant funding and the city local match, we did not have that correct in, in the budget, and so we need to um, to budget an additional uh, $100,546 uh, to fund that uh, that project that will be presented to council uh, here later this evening. Uh, the water fund is in, in good stead financially uh, and can support this uh, additional appropriation that's being requested tonight. I'm 
be happy to answer any questions that you may have. All right, thank you, Mr. Duke. Any questions for our finance director tonight? All right. At this time, I'll seek a motion to approve as an emergency. Mr. President, I move to adopt Ordinance 24, 2024-06. Thank you. Moved by Councilman Reynolds. Do we have a second? No second. Seconded by Councilman Dean. Any questions or concerns? All right. This time, we'll go ahead and seek a roll call, please. Councilman Crawford? Aye. Councilman Cerise? Aye. Councilman Reynolds? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Mayor Mayor? Aye. President Smith? Aye. President Smith. Aye. President Smith. Aye. Thanks. Our next item under new business is Ordinance 202407, which we'll seek an introduction tonight. This is going to amend the official zoning map of the city of Xenia to rezone property located at 130 East Church Street from a P1 public and institutional district to the B1 convenience business district and to rezone the property at 194 East Church Street from R1C, a one-family residential district, to B1 Convenience Business District. So at this time, we'll turn this over to Mr. Merriman for explanation. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, on March 13th, the Planning and Zoning Commission conducted a public hearing and subsequently voted to recommend uh, the rezoning of four parcels. Uh, as indicated, these are addressed at uh, 130 and 194 East Church Street. Uh, these actions came at the recommendation of city staff. Uh, with the recent sale of the property at 130 East Church Street, uh, the, the new owners are requesting a rezoning of the property to accommodate its intended reuse as a commercial site uh, for research and development. The site is currently zoned P1, and given this, such use would not be permitted. However, research and development would be permitted as a conditional use under a B1 zoning designation, which is the change that is being requested in this particular case. Uh, additionally, O'Neill's Catering LLC intends to renovate the former Carnegie Library at 194 East Church Street uh, and convert this to a restaurant and catering business. The business and its, um, excuse me, the, the business is not uh, permitted under its current uh, zoning of, of R1C, uh, but would be a principal permitted use under the uh, proposed B1 zoning. Uh, the proposed B1 district uh, will not only accommodate these uh, uh, proposed uses, but it really is a more compatible uh, use with the properties that surround in the residential neighborhood and some of the other institutional on the, on the opposite side. Um, the uh, uh, city staff is supportive of the uh, proposed projects at both of these sites, uh, and we are uh, endorsing this change. So we are asking the council uh, introduce this ordinance this evening, uh, bring it for consideration, and ultimately approve the rezoning. All right. Thank you, uh, thank you, City Manager Merriman. We appreciate that. Um, anyone have any questions for him at this time? All right. Um, I do have one question. Um, in terms of the parking lot, what are the what, what's the vision for the parking lot? Parking lot will remain uh, at the city parking. Um, okay. That is essential for our justice center, for our uh, police and communications uh, staff that uh, that work at the justice center. Thank you. Anyone care to introduce that? Oh, Thank you. Ca Councilman Reynolds had his hand up there quick. Thank you, sir. Our next item is Resolution 2024-015. This is awarding a bid authorizing execution of a contract with Kinnison Excavating for the 2024 Country Club Drive Water Main Project. And this goes back to Mr. Merrill. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is the first of multiple uh, awards of bid this evening uh, for a lot of projects uh, that have kept our engineering staff and our construction inspection staff very busy, and we'll keep them very busy through this year. Uh, in July of 2022, the city applied for and received uh, state grant funds through the Ohio Public Works Commission to rehabilitate infrastructure along Country Club Drive uh, from North Detroit Street to Eagles Way. Um, there are two aspects of the intended work. Uh, this includes the replacement and upsizing of approximately 3,900 linear feet of water main from a 10-inch uh, pipe to a 12-inch pipe, and second, the rehabilitation of the roadway over the entire length of this uh, section of road from curb to curb. The engineer's estimate for the combined project was $1.9 million, uh, just over $1.9 million. Of this, OPWC awarded the city a $600,000 grant, uh, which covers 31% of the total. As a result, the city's 69% uh, share of the project would be $1,333,623. Uh, please remember that per our capital improvement plans, this project is being split into two phases. So uh, we will commence with the first phase, which is uh, uh, the water main upsizing and replacement uh, in 2024. And uh, that second phase with the street rehabilitation will, uh, will commence in 2025. 
Um, this is a pretty invasive project, so there obviously will be some interruption to a significant interruption to traffic flow on the roadway. It will take an extended period of time to finish this. Um, as the uh, respective split on the engineer's estimate for each phase was um, uh, $1.249 million, uh, the, uh, the, I should say, the split for the water main portion of the work was $1.249,210. Uh, $684.40, $684, oh my goodness, $684,413, too many numbers uh, for the street rehab portion. Um, again, this evening's recommended action on the item is only for the bid solicitation associated with uh, the water main work. Uh, we did open bids on March 1st. The city received four bids from prospective contractors to complete uh, this uh, replacement and upsizing of the existing water main. Uh, based on submittals, uh, the low bidder was m and Excavating Incorporated, which has no previous work history with the city. As a res uh, result, uh, our staff conducted a uh, reference, check, uh, reference check and found that um, water-related projects uh, for which m and Excavating was uh, providing references um, were very limited uh, in terms of, of the, the projects of this nature and of this size. Um, the only projects of similar magnitude and size uh, and cost were with the, the city of Huber Heights. Uh, the other project examples that were submitted were of significantly smaller scope. Uh, the engineering division then co uh, contacted several of the references uh, listed for similar types of projects, uh, and the feedback we received uh, did raise some concerns. Uh, so set staff conducted some supplemental research into the company's past work performance and discovered some other uh, con concerning items. Uh, the results of the reference checks combined with the notable disparity in bid amounts did raise uh, some reasonable questions about the vendor's ability to perform acceptable work at or under budget. Um, by charter and statutory authority, the city does reserve the right to award bids based on lowest and best uh, bids submitted. Uh, and we require that all bidders furnish satisfactory evidence that they can fulfill the conditions of the contract, that they have sufficient experience, uh, and have a satisfactory <coughs> record of integrity and of work performance. Uh, based on the staff's research and the uh, references we've received, uh, it is the staff's position that in this particular case, the low bid is not necessarily the best bid. Um, and as such, moving forward uh, with an award to this vendor may compromise the quality and ultimately the cost effectiveness of, of this particular project. Uh, in light of this, uh, we are recommending the council find the next lowest bid submitted by Kennison Excavating Incorporated to be the lowest and best. Uh, Kennison has completed several other projects of this type for the city. They've got a proven track record of excellent performance. Uh, Kennison's bid of $1,203,690 is under the engineer's estimate as presented. Um, we're recommending council award the bid to uh, Kennison excavating and authorize the execution of the contract to perform that work uh, at the price that they have uh, indicated. Uh, council will, will recall that we ran into some issues with a low bidder last year on the work on 2nd Street. And uh, that has made us, I think, even more judicious as we look to award high dollar, large scale projects to make sure that uh, we are getting the best value for the city, which sometimes means ensure you're getting, you're getting good quality work. So uh, this is a little bit uh, out of our typical routine. Uh, and uh, I think you, because of that, you know that uh, we proceed to, to, to make this recommendation with caution. So uh, we feel that this is what's in the city's best interest and would recommend that you move forward with the wording as such. All right, thank you. Any questions for I did have Our one, city manager. One yes. question. Yes. Uh, I'll start with uh, Councilman Reynolds, and I'll come back to you. Uh, my question is on the, the pipe, the increasing it to 12 inches. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, we've um, that was originally stalled at a point where there's much less development. That line actually runs all the way to Central State. Oh, it's wow. part of the connecting line to Central State. In fact, the balance of that line is not is not actually city owned property. It's state owned property. It needs to be replaced all the way out to the Wilberforce area. Um, so based on our the hydraulic studies that we've we've had done, uh, it is appropriate uh, not only to replace it, but as we're replacing it, upsizing it to, to ensure that there's plenty of capacity for the future. Okay. All right. Thank you. And my question was just answered. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Not seeing any other questions. Who would like to make the motion to award the bid to Kennison? So moved. Moved by the mayor. Do we have a second? A second. Seconded by Councilwoman Cerise. <coughs> We have no other additional questions. We'll ask for a roll call, please. Councilman Crawford? Aye. Councilwoman Therese? Aye. Councilman Reynolds? Aye. Councilman Mead? Aye. Mayor Mays? Aye. Vice President Smith? Aye. Motion carries? All right, thank you. Next on our agenda is resolution 2024-016. This is awarding the bid 
an authorizing execution of contract with John R. Jurgensen Company for the 2024 street paving program. And we'll turn this over to Mr. Merriman as well. Thank you, sir. Uh, the city's annual street rehab program includes considerations certainly for roadway paving, but also uh, improvements such as ADA ramp replacements that are needed prior to future roadway projects and curb and, 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 and other concrete work as necessary uh, that would be accessory work to, to paving that we are un undertaking. Uh, as planned in our CIP and as provided for in the 2024 appropriations ordinance, the city's uh, 2024 annual street program included uh, East 2nd Street resurfacing from Col South Columbus Street to South uh, Patton Street, East Church Street ADA ramp replacements and Corwin, uh, from Corwin Avenue to North Monroe Drive, and curb and asphalt improvements at the Ford Road and Glady Run wastewater treatment plants. Additionally, City Council uh, instructed staff to evaluate options for additional neighborhood street rehab uh, with any supplementary resources that might be brought to bear. Staff that then recommended to, to council that uh, directing some capital reserves, reserve funds as a one-time funding source uh, expectation could be accommodated and, uh, um, and uh, subsequently uh, recommended uh, road rehab work that could be added to this list in the right cycle, right cycle estates. Um, this was selected primarily because those roads would be mill and fill related activities, which are, are really some of our most cost effective uh, road treatments available to us. Um, given the factors uh, presented, uh, engineering staff solicited bids for uh, the related projects uh, on second uh, in church and at the water plants and then included right cycle estates. Uh, the engineer uh, estimate for the total program, which was the base bid plus all of the alternates, was $2,267,022.50. On Friday, March 1st, the city received three bids from qualified contractors to complete uh, this program. Um, at $1,915,915.50, John R. Jurgensen Company provided the lowest bid, uh, and the firm has successfully completed numerous similar projects for the city, uh, as well as for regional jurisdictions over many years. Uh, so they're they're clearly lowest and best. Uh, staff is recommending award of bid with the contractor um, and request approval to execute a contract to complete this work this summer. All right, thank you for that explanation. I'll open this up for questions. Any questions? Yeah, we've discussed this in our work session. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. So it is a little daunting to, for citizens to understand why streets are selected in the order that they are. Um, it, this is a case where we're actually trying to uh, get as much paving for our dollar as possible by doing the mill, of, mill and fill at right cycle estates because those streets are actually still sal salvageable without going under the uh, into the base yeah am i correct there and additionally uh, that's all newer water and sewer infrastructure um right. so there it's under less risk of having to tear new roadway up or the mill, newly mill, milled and filled roadway uh, to repair that so again we look at multiple factors um, the total cost the the cost effectiveness of the treatment those buried infrastructure elements um, so th th this investment will, will take those dollars a lot further um, uh, in terms of the total lane miles we can pay. Right, thank you. And if you're watching this and, and for going in on record, th this is probably the most we've done in, in a, a few years. Yeah, especially when you combine the other projects we're awarding tonight with grant right. funds. Right. There will be lots of construction underway right. in the city. Right. So we know there's a lot of streets, uh, majority of them. Need work, um, but this is um, going to take some time and appreciate people's patience. So, uh, who would like to make the motion on this? So moved. moved by Councilman Dean and seconded by Councilman Reynolds. Do we have any other discussion? All right, this time we'll ask the clerk for a roll call, please. Councilman Crawford? Aye. Councilman Reynolds? Aye. Councilman Reynolds? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Vice President Aye. Motion Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is. I thought, I thought she got sick. Yeah. I just thought she was real quiet and I missed it. Hi. Hi. Uh, all, right. all right. All right. Your vote is important. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our next item is resolution 2024 17. This is awarding a bid and authorizing execution of a contract also with your John R. Jurgensen Company for the U.S. Route 42. 
uh, Industrial Boulevard to City Court Limit resurfacing project. So we'll turn this back over to Mr. Merriman for a brief explanation of this. Thank you again, sir. Uh, in December of 2020, the city received federal urban resurfacing program funds from the Ohio Department of Transportation for the US 42 uh, resurfacing project, which would rehab roadway again from Industrial Boulevard to the City Corp limits in that area of town. Uh, the urban resurfacing program through ODOT funds up to 80% of the cost to mill and resurface, along with any associated roadway striping for projects on state and US routes. Uh, based on the engineer's estimate of the total cost, ODOT will fund up to a maximum of $556,000 on this particular project. Uh, all other costs are responsible are the responsibility of the city. Again, on Friday, March 1st, the city uh, accepted bids, open bids from qualified contractors. We received three of them. Uh, of the bids submitted, John R. Jurgensen Company was the low bidder at $679,500.09. Uh, again, they have an ex exemplary reputation and a lot of history with the city, so we do find them to be lowest and best. Uh, staff is recommending that uh, John R. Jurgensen uh, be awarded the bid and that uh, council authorizes us to move forward with the contract to that effect. All right, thank you. This time I'll open up the floor. Any questions for Mr. Merriman? Right. Uh, Mr. Merriman, I do have one question. Um, I know we brought up the engineering estimates. I was curious, were those done in the 2020 cycle or were those done more recently, those estimates? Originally in the 2020, yeah, yeah. And then and that's where you will see sometimes, and this happened actually, I think about a year, two years ago, we had done a number of estimates based on um, really the, the effective uh, costs prior to the, the, the super inflation we've experienced the last couple of years. And we had to actually uh, supplement with quite a bit of additional uh, city dollars in projects back around 2021. Um, so yeah, that it, it, it can it can have an impact if you do see high inflationary rates over a short period of time because these grant cycles typically you're applying in, in a year and it might be three to five years depending on the program before you would actually see dollars. So so the so the application accompanies the the award to, for the for the grants. Yeah, we submit the engineering report. The the determination is made at, at that time based on those numbers. Now again, there are times given different state programs where the state may have additional monies to help offset any increase, but typically the city will be responsible for that increased cost. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, does that answer your question? It does. All right, anyone else have questions? All right, if not, we'll seek a motion to award the bid. I move to award the bid. To Thank you. Second. Okay. Thank you. Ellie. Motion by Councilman Reynolds, followed by a second by Councilwoman Cerise. If there's no other questions, we'll go ahead and move for roll call, please. Councilman Crawford? Aye. Councilwoman Cerise? Aye. Councilman Reynolds? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Mayor Mitch? Aye. Mayor Mays? Aye. Vice President Smith? Aye. Thank you. Yeah, you got in there on that one. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Our next, <laughs> our next item is Resolution 2024-18. This is also awarding a bid and authorizing execution of a contract, again, with John R. Jerkison Company for the East Market Street. That is from North Detroit Street to North Columbus Street, and that's a resurfacing project as well. Mr. Merriman, would you care? And i also like to, for the record, let people know our, our public service director, and engineer Chris Berger is here with us tonight. Do you want to add anything that, that's been said? Are you good? Okay, thanks for being here, I appreciate it. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, thank you. Uh, in October 2021, the city applied for and received federal surface transportation programming uh, funds through the uh, Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission uh, for the East Market Street resurfacing project. This includes rehab work on market from Detroit to North Columbus Street. Uh, in addition to the sorely needed uh, rehabilitation and reconstruction of this section of Market Street, uh, the, there will be significant improvements uh, to, to curbing and adjacent sidewalks along this stretch of roadway. Uh, this has a lot of public use given all the institutional uses nearby, and it, no one would argue that this is uh, not in desperate need of rehabilitation. So we are excited to be able to move forward with this. Um, the uh, ADA ramps along this section were previously uh, replaced uh, last year. Um, in, in anticipation of this project, so that, that all has already been completed. Uh, similar to past uh, STP applications, uh, the approved grant application requires a split of 69% federal funding and 31% local match funding. On the engineer's estimate for the project uh, was $727,556.80. On Friday, March 1st, the city received three bids from qualified contractors for this project as well. Uh, at $473,610.27, the, 
The bid from John R. Jerkinson was the lowest. Again, they have an excellent reputation, and we view them to be the lowest and best here. Uh, the firm has successfully completed a lot of projects for us. Obviously, they'll be doing several projects this year. Um, so we are requesting authorization to award this bid and execute a contract for completion of this project. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I'll open up the floor for any questions. I, are they being – I'm concerned about all the construction right now with the library that we do not – the road while there's all the construction happening. Yeah, there's, and well, there's still be, in addition to, because uh, I think they're doing some gas work, the library work, we also have the um, security uh, uh -huh. bump out that's being done on uh, the Justice Center. Uh, uh, engineering has been in coordination with all these different elements okay. to make sure that we'll time it. Um, there obviously has been and will continue to be in, an interruption to both vehicular and pedestrian traffic flow. It's it's unavoidable here, uh, but we are working to coordinate among these different right. projects to minimize the confusion. I'm not worried about the traffic flow. I'm just concerned that we don't pay something that yeah. then gets destroyed yeah. because we do the security bump right. out. Yeah, yeah. we've later. had that very conversation okay. to make sure that all the rest of this work is getting out, done out in front, that we're not tearing anything up that you know is brand new infrastructure so this will this will be an amazing difference once it's done but obviously we don't want to rip anything up that's that's brand new thank you all right who else has questions so with this passage i count on my calculator we're shy over just a little more than three million dollars in street repair yeah, uh, at least yeah. correct, Mr. Duke? What's that? Uh, based on yeah, I think it's actually, I think it's actually uh, more uh, yeah, yeah, than yeah, yeah, if you look at the with the grant funds as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's going to be a very, very busy summer for our engineering and construction inspection. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, I know that it's been brought up that I live on the street. This is not this. That's something that I've stayed from when we originally talked about the project. This is just accepting the award of the bid. So, I wanted to note that. You're, you're good. Whatever you want to do. Sure. Yep. All right. Um, it's, it's obviously in need of immediate attention. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So at this time, I'll uh, entertain a motion to accept the uh, bid. I make a motion to accept the bid for the resolution of 2024-1. I mean, zero one eight. Thank you. Moved by Councilman Crawford. Do we have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Councilman Dean. Thank you. This time we'll go ahead and ask for roll call, please. Councilman Crawford. Aye. Councilwoman Reese. Aye. Councilman Reynolds. Aye. Councilman Dean. Aye. Mayor Mays. Aye. Vice President Smith. Aye. And while we have our um, public service manager and uh, engineer here, I have a question for you. So there's a lot of uh, activity at like Monroe and Ang E, a lot of little utility flags and uh, uh, what's going on there? Do you, do you have a time to enlighten us on that? Yeah, sure. That's all. That's all. Uh, uh, Center Point Energy. They're they're subcontractors who are gotcha. doing that for them. Uh, they've been concentrating pretty much in that area. Geez, sure. probably the last four years. So the the Sutton Edison area, right, right. Monroe. Okay, that's yeah. what I figured. Yeah, they're, and just they're the required under uh, their the licensing under PUCO to do, have systematic rehabilitation replacement of their infrastructure. There, so they're replacing some pretty old gas lines, mm -hmm. yeah. and they're methodically going through the city, different neighborhoods over a multi-year plan to replace right. all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and and as a side note, the, the the work that the mayor just brought up there on on Market Street. They weren't intending to do that until I think two more years down the road. But then when we met with them, and said, "Hey, we got this. We got this grant project." They actually, to their credit, put that at the top of the list. So that's why they're doing it ahead of time. In relation to the uh, street work, um, I, I did a quick um, uh, calculation. As far as the work on public roads this year, there's about 2.9 million bucks, mm -hmm. and it's about 3.8 miles of roadway. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, Mr. Berger, can Councilman Crawford ask you a question? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so does that is that infrastructure mean for improvements for dwellings as well, moving the meters to the outside, improving those meters? No, it doesn't. Oh, okay. No, not on this project. Pro okay. You talk about the road projects. You mean? No, the gas, the, the gas lines. Oh, yeah. No, that I don't. I they will do that. Center Point will for for the customers, right? There. It's nothing we're doing. That's what I'm struggling with. That's all through them. Yeah, I think this is all just individual pipeline replacement in residential neighborhoods. Yeah. Okay. But they will replace the service lines. They'll stub those out as they go along putting the new main in. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. We, we got that moved, right? Okay. Yep. So 
lost it. Uh, so our next item is resolution 2024-019. This is determining certain city-owned properties are no longer needed for municipal purposes, and we're authorizing our city manager to use negotiations or informal com competition for the lease of those said properties for agricultural use. So, Mr. Merriman, would you explain that for us? Thanks. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, by city charter, any changes in disposition of city-owned property require council action. Uh, given this staff it recommends council determine that two properties are not needed for needed for any municipal purpose and thus provide for leasing of these properties for private use. Uh, these properties are listed by parcel in your agenda report but are generally recognizable as vacant land um, on uh, uh, north of the Woodland Cemetery off of uh, Tyler Road uh, adjacent to the city's former landfill uh, and then also vacant land immediately adjacent to the Glady Run wastewater treatment plant uh, lower Bel Belbrook Avenue. Uh, if so designated by council, the intent would be to continue to lease these fields for farm use but retain ownership of the properties. Uh, the disposition of these two city-owned properties was discussed with the Property Management Committee at its meeting on March 14th. Uh, the committee recommended that council find they are not needed for any municipal use and then uh, authorize staff to negotiate these leases. And again, our intent would be that they would continue as an agricultural purpose. Uh, the leases themselves will have to be presented to council for approval as required by charter. Um, so once we have those uh, arrangements negotiated, we will be back for uh, further action with council. All right. Thank you, Mr. Merriman. I'll open up before any questions. We'll talk about this too. All right. If there's no questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, this resolution to sell these properties. So moved. Thank you. Moved by the mayor. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman. Reynolds. And at this time, we'll let, uh, ask for roll call, please. Councilman Crawford? Aye. Councilwoman Street? Aye. Councilman Reynolds? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Mayor Lee? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next on our agenda is a appointed officials report. So we'll start with Mr. Duke. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. I uh, just want to remind everybody there's uh, about two and a half weeks left uh, to file your taxes. Um, it is a uh, filing deadline of April 15th this year, which is Actually, the first time in many years that the deadline has fallen on April 15th, it seemed like that was always the deadline, but the last several years it's actually been delayed because of Emancipation Day in, in Washington, D.C. Um, but the deadline is April 15th this year. Um, please don't forget uh, to file city taxes. The city, um, uh, or RIA, who, who contracts uh, with the city to provide that service, has a, a nice website where people can file their taxes online. They can also come in uh, to this building, 107 East Main Street, and file your taxes uh, here at the city building. Rita has an office here in this building, and will help people uh, and answer any questions they may have uh, in filing those city tax returns. So uh, that's all I have this evening. All right, thank you. Any Anything for Mr. Duke tonight? Just to piggyback off mm -hmm. of Rita, they'll actually like hand them your W-2, and they're like, all right. They fill it all out, and I'm like, no here you go, way. sign this, and no that is very simple, so. Yep, they, they'll, they'll do all the all the work for you. Yeah, all I do is sign my name. I yeah. wish they did corporate returns. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that brings me to my question, Mr. Duke, um, on, on commercial filing or business filings, for those extensions, what's the proper ex extension process? Yeah, so if you file a federal extension, then you are automatically uh, you're automatically extended uh, with the city as well. So you don't have to file an additional document. Okay. We accept that federal uh, extension. We don't do any um, any follow up on returns that are missing until after that federal deadline. So uh, if you provide a copy of your federal extension when you file your taxes with the city, that that will suffice. Very good. Thank you. Yep. How long is the extension for? Just curious. Uh, it's I don't actually know the, the date, but I think it's September, um, somewhere in that that neighborhood. All right. Thank you. If there's anyone else have anything for Mr. Duke, thank you. Um, in absence of our law director, if if she has anything to cover, I guess she'll take care of that. Yep. But we'll go ahead and turn the floor over to uh, our city manager, Mr. Merriman. Also, like to thank our assistant city manager, Mr. Holloway. You're in the audience tonight. Thank you. And our, and our police chief, thank you for, for your protection. All right, we'll yeah, go ahead and move on to Mr. Manager. Just two items to note this evening. Um, first, uh, uh, next week, April 3rd, uh, Wednesday next week, is the 50th anniversary of the super outbreak of uh, tornadoes that, of course, uh, deeply impacted this community. Uh, we have been in the process of, of uh, taking some steps to memorialize this rather significant anniversary. 
Uh, we have, uh, I think just today, uh, completed and uploaded to YouTube a, uh, a really good video documentary piece telling just a couple of the stories from that particular event. I want to thank Christina Schaefer, our public relations coordinator, for putting together a very, very, very good uh, video piece that, again, just tells a little bit of that story. Um, on April 3rd next week, we will uh, uh, host downtown a uh, celebration of the resiliency of the community, uh, honoring those uh, that lost lives and really reflecting back on the contributions of everyone uh, who uh, went through that and survived it and then helped to rebuild our community. Um, so we'll be gathering uh, in the block uh, downtown on Main Street, uh, just uh, south of the courthouse. Um, uh, for a, a series of, of speakers. Um, this will be a fairly brief event, uh, looking at around 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, some unpredictability with weather that time of year, so we will have uh, a tent with some limited seating. Uh, we obviously can't make accommodations for everyone, but we, we will have some limited seating. So I believe we will have the governor there. Uh, we'll have uh, some officials from the National Weather Service. Um, we have the uh, Red Patterson Air Force Band of Flight will be uh, providing um, uh, some services as well. Uh, mayor uh, is participating. So again, we, we invite the public to come out and uh, celebrate uh, the fact that Xenia has lived on and that we are thriving. Um, so we encourage folks to, to join us. Uh, we will be closing uh, this facility a little early that day uh, at 4 o'clock um, so that our, our folks here can participate. Additionally, on April 8th uh, is a uh, total solar eclipse. We've had some discussion with council about this. I uh, just want to remind folks that we will be closing our administrative offices at noon on that day just to allow our staff to get home uh, safely in what could be some congested traffic. Um, so again, we will be closed a little early on April 8th. And that is all I have this evening. All right, thank you very much. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Brennan? All right, we're gonna move on to council comments and reports. Um, we'll start tonight with Councilwoman Cerise. I don't have any reports, but I did want to say that um, this week I did do a ride along with um, the police department with Officer Corey Farrar. Um, it, we rode around together for about six hours um, on her quote beat. Um, <laughs> she was she's a newer officer. She was first worked as a dispatcher, so it made it quite an easy transition over to be an officer because she was very well equipped um, on the radio did an excellent job. Um, we um, didn't have anything too exciting happening, which is great, um, but uh, we did have some, um, notice some interpersonal issues with some residents, and she handled everything very well. Um, another officer showed up every time that we arrived at a situation. They worked in tandem with each other, um, were exceptional. I was highly impressed, did a great job with the needs of our community. Um, we have some unique needs and challenges, a lot of um, issues with folks, and they were exceptional in every situation. I was very proud of them. Um, so I learned a lot, and I was um, very, I was really happy to have done that. So thank you for your guidance. Obviously, you're doing a fine job, so I really appreciated it. All right. Thank you, Councilman Cerise. <coughs> Councilman Crawford. Um, maybe one item, just to say that I did get a chance to tour the, the Xenia shoe and leather, or the apartments that were actually being installed to the upper two floors. Impressive work. The design looks great. It's it's going to be an exciting project, and whoever gets the chance to, to live there is going to be a phenomenal experience for anyone living there. Um, they're about, they, they're projecting, I think, midsummer to be complete. That may be a bit aggressive, but um, anyway, just, just really appreciate that, that forward moving because I'm, I'm getting some questions about maybe some of the other projects that could go on similar to that in Xenia. So, and, and just being um, a voice and a recommendation for that, I, I count it as an honor and, and great to be a part of this growth in our, in our community today with that business. All right, thank you, Councilman Crawford. We'll move on to our Councilman Reynolds. So the Budget Committee meets next uh, week uh, on the 4th. The 4th, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know 4th, 4th. Day. On the 4th, uh, in regards to comments, uh, I'm pretty excited to be downtown for the ceremony for uh, the, the tornado. I'm not originally from Xenia, uh, but you know, moving here, everyone that has been here for many years, it's, it's something that everyone talks about, something that everyone knows about. And you're like, oh, I live near day in to the, you know, 
east, and like, oh, we're at Raquel Zenit, and everyone knows where it's at. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to see the city, you know, making its way again. Uh, you know, three million dollars in road repairs coming this year, so it's exciting times for our city. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Reynolds. Uh, Councilman D. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, did you have an update about the crossing bagel room? We're talking about that later. Yeah, we. Yeah, I can just mention in a little more detail. We do have some fixes in mind, uh, working that into the schedule with our crews. So I don't have a specific date when we'll have that, but but we are looking at improvements at, at that location, and I think a couple of the other bike crossings where we'll take some steps to um, address some of the safety concerns. There's some legitimate concerns and some minor fixes I think can really improve that. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? That's it. All right. Thank you. I'll turn it over to the mayor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, not as much to report. I was out of town for about a week, so I did not get to go to as many events, but I um, wanted to mention that on Saturday, March 16th, they attended, um, as well as Councilman Dean, um, the Tecumseh Territories Chapter of National Wild Turkey Federation Dinner at the Fairgrounds, so that's held here in Xenia, and quite a few folks come out for that. Um, so I wanted to thank them for their hospitality. On Monday, March 18th, I um, participated um, with the Xenia Police Force for the, uh, with the accreditation agency, Kalia, and had an uh, opportunity to interview with uh, two of the folks that came out and had a great conversation with them. Um, on Wednesday, March 27th, I spoke at Cedarville University to their government class uh, with Dr. Patrick Oliver. Um, just had a lot of really uh, good discussion with students about their involvement in local government and what that might look like in their future. So great questions. They had a lot of great questions about um, not just local government, but the city and ways to be involved and, and volunteer here. So it's very exciting. Um, a couple things that I want to remind people that this Saturday is the Easter egg hunt, the community Easter egg hunt at the uh, Shawnee Park. So um, if you're interested in volunteering, I would ask uh, people to come out at 9 a.m. to volunteer. We could definitely use a few more volunteers, a few more hands on deck. So Shawnee Park, 9 a.m. will get things set up. Um, registration, if you want to register for a raffle um, Easter basket, you can come at 10 a.m. That's when the registration opens. Um, and again, if you want to donate a basket, you can drop that off here at the city building or at Emmanuel Baptist Church or bring it that morning um, to the park. And then 10.30 is the helicopter egg drop. And then at 11 a.m., we will have uh, five different egg hunts at staggered times. They will not be all at once. Uh, five different groups. Um, we've got a, a special hunt for kids with unique needs. We have a hunt for uh, babies, for toddlers, for five to eight year olds, and nine to 12 year olds. So we make sure that we stagger those out, and then after that we will be um, have the opportunity to raffle off baskets, and uh, Shane from Walmart has graciously donated bikes for a grand prize. So it'll be a fun morning, and it's uh, the Easter Bunny will be there. You can come and take pictures for free. So it's a great time to come out and see people in your community. A lot of our churches are going to be involved and have giveaways. Um, I also wanted to mention April 6th is going to be a cleanup day for the city. Um, Keith Cook has been very helpful in putting some um, areas together that uh, might need cleaned up. We, um, the XREC team is going to be here and helping to send people out. They will have trash bags available, gloves, trash picker uppers, um, and places where you can leave your trash bags. And we'll send you out the next day, April 7th, is the Xenia Marathon, which is a Boston Marathon qualifier. So we really want to make sure that we spend some time on the 6th um, doing some cleanup around town. There's quite a few areas that, especially in the spring, uh, the storms come and go and the trash blows around. We have some very specific areas that we would like to address. So if you are available to come out, bring an organization, bring your friends, um, bring your Sunday school class, whatever that might look like, bring your scouting group, so that'll be on Saturday, April 6th at 9 a.m. Um, if you have, we will be putting some information out, I believe, on social media, uh, hopefully about that. So if there are questions, you can follow up with myself or someone in the city. And I just wanted to mention that I uh, Easter on Sunday, I do hope people take time to um, go to one of our many great churches here in this community. We have a lot of great churches that work together do a lot for this community, and Easter is a great time to visit a church. So please go out and celebrate Easter well um, in the resurrection of our Lord. That's all I have. All right, thank you. That event on April 6th, where are you meeting at? Uh, here, for April 6th, meet here at the city building at 9 a.m. We'll just do 9 a.m. to probably about 11 or 12. The goal is 9, is 9 to 12, but depending on the day, depending on the weather, right. who knows. Right, thank you. And the Easter egg hunt is rain or shine? Rain or shine, come on out. All right. Dress for the weather because you yeah. never know. So uh, just a couple things. Um, after uh, 
my comments, uh, we are going to move into an executive session, so uh, just be aware of that. Uh, I did want to make a couple comments. Um, there, there is um, discussion on social media about the Pancake Day being canceled by the Xenia Rotary. That was not a city that did not cancel that event. That, that was canceled by the Rotary due to uh, lack of uh, participation, actually, over this, since COVID, they've had even lower attendance than before. Um, I remember when that used to be at Benner Field House, and, and then they moved it kind of the fairgrounds, and, and I, it's just, um, it, it's disappointing it's, it's canceled, but uh, that's their decision, and that was a volunteer organization. They really didn't make much money off of that because they opened it up and made it free. Um, and everybody likes free food, so I'll leave it at that. A um, couple more things here. I, I would like to uh, thank the citizens that were able to vote. Um, I would like to thank those that participated in the uh, voting for our safety services levy um, that did uh, go down. Uh, so we are a little disappointed in that. Um, however, um, we understand, we get it. Uh, there's a lot of financial challenges right now, a lot of economic hardship. Um, property values have uh, gone up quite a bit, so your taxes went up, we get it. We understand, so we'll, we'll regroup and figure out our best way of moving forward uh, from a leadership perspective on that. Also, with the election, I'd like to congratulate two people that are actually sitting up here tonight. Uh, first, Councilman Dean, who won his primary bid for state legislator, so congratulations on that. And also uh, congratulate our own mayor, Mayor Mays, who won her primary bid for county commission. Thank so thank you very much. And um, I know elect. you have an election in November, uh, Councilman Dean, uh, right, mm -hmm. for a general election. But uh, Mayor Mays, you do not have an opponent. Is that I correct? I do not have an opponent. Okay. Now. Unless somebody wants to just throw their name. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Deadline passed. Deadline passed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Funny, not no, funny. No. I, I know you both uh, work very hard, um, and uh, congratulations on that. We know you're going to do great things. Um, so uh, next, per Ohio Revised Code 121.22 ORC. Uh, I will make a motion for us to move into executive session. This is for the purchase of sale of property and a request for economic development assistance. So uh, for those that are in the audience, we do not anticipate any legislative action after the outcome of that executive meeting. So we are going to take uh, just a short, uh, very, very short recess uh, due to time. Uh, some of us have some other obligations tonight. Um, but at this Thank time, uh, we'll go to recess. Vice and then you, you were both for the executive. Vice President. Correct. With, um, Wesley, may I ask, would somebody be able to address Mr. Hammer about? He did. Did you do? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right. You missed it. Sure. No, that's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Did you hear well, that? Your, your concerns were addressed. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, I'm just kind of wondering if there's, you know, is it going to be, uh, you know, the bike season's kicking off. So is it going to be done, you know, before, you know, May or June, or, or are we going to see it when the snow starts falling again? Yeah, I, re I really don't have a specific timeline. I'll have to look, but I can get back with council. Okay. okay. We'll try to have an answer for you. All right. So at this time, we're going to recess briefly. We, we, and we need a vote. Second, and a roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. I made the motion, but we didn't get a second. Second. Seconded by Councilman Reynolds. Um, roll call, please. Councilman Crawford. Here. Well, yes. 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we do know you're here. <laughs> you're three. Aye. 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 Aye.